You know, I sometimes wonder if there's anyone in charge of our energy policies who has even a vague understanding of basic physics or engineering. These policies seem to be driven by nothing more than magical thinking and fluffy feel-good gestures, believing that it will be okay because at the end of the day we're saving the planet, right? This is nowhere more obvious than here in Australia, where at precisely the same time as we're being told to go out and buy electric cars, our only reliable forms of electricity generation, coal and gas-fired power stations, are literally being shut down to be replaced with what, you may ask? Windmills and solar panels. And nobody seems to appreciate just how much electricity is required to charge a fleet of EVs at a barely acceptable speed. One single 250 kilowatt fast charger uses as much electricity as boiling 100 kettles at once, or about the equivalent of about 35 ordinary households. But where is this electricity capacity coming from? If you're after EV and net zero sanity, you've come to the right place. If you like this kind of content, it would be great to have you as a subscriber. And don't forget to enable all notifications so you never miss another video. The same madness is happening in the US, where a recent report by the National Energy Reliability Corporation has found that the grids simply won't cope with the increased demand over the next four years. Much of North America may face electricity shortages starting in 2024. Over the next several years, many regions of the US and Canada may struggle to ensure a reliable electricity supply amid soaring energy demand from the tech industry and electrification of buildings and vehicles. More than 300 million people in the US and Canada face the growing possibility of electricity shortages beginning as early as 2024 and continuing to 2028. In a recent report, the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, NERC, an international regulatory authority overseeing the North American power grid, projected that a majority of regions in the US and Canada will have insufficient electricity supply to reliably meet demand during extreme weather conditions. A few may even see interruptions under normal weather conditions. I think it is striking that the majority of regions are at an elevated or high level of risk, says Johan Kavert at the Niskanen Center an environmental think tank based in Washington, D.C. This should not be the norm and is quite a frightening assessment heading into the unknowns of another winter. The report found that North Americans' peak demand, the highest amount of electricity needed in a given period, is rising faster than any time in the past five years. The sharp increase also represents a reversal of a decades-long trend involving falling or flat demand growth rates. One issue contributing to the problem is the supply of energy. As power plants that run on fossil fuels are being retired, they are not being replaced with renewable energy sources at the same pace, said Mark Olson at NERC during a media briefing on 13 December. Challenges around agreeing on transmission line routes and getting the required permits have delayed connecting new renewable energy sources to the US power grid. On top of that, a nationwide power transformer shortage is complicating such efforts. It's not just EVs, of course. The massive growth of data centres also adds to the demand for electricity. But at the same time that demand is spiking upwards, we seem to be doing everything possible to reduce our ability to generate and deliver it. And this problem is only going to get worse. Here in Australia, we have the largest reserves of uranium on the planet, but we refuse to allow any nuclear power generation. So it's only a matter of time before our grid and those around the world will start to collapse under the weight of both lack of supply from renewables and too much demand from EVs. That's just about it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think. And that's also just about it for 2023. A huge, huge thank you for your support of this channel over the past few months. It's been quite incredible. Looking forward to seeing you in 2024, but for now I wish you a very happy new year.